Hello everyone, welcome back to another video, and in this video I'm going to be showing you every single game rule in Minecraft. Now if you like content like this then please do consider subscribing, and then without any further ado let's just get into all of the game rules. So I'll be going through the game rules in alphabetical order, and I'll be going over all of the game rules in Java and also Bedrock. So first of all I have one in Java, that's why I'm here as well, and it's the game rule Announce advancements. So this is normally set to true. So now if I get an advancement, so for example, if I get a piece of stone, as you can see in the chat, it says has made an advancement stone age. And over here, it also pops up with a an tag. And if we set the game roll to false like this, and then get another advancement. So there we go, getting an upgrade. As you can see, it says nothing in the chat about this advancement, but it does give us the little screen. So for the second game rule, we move over to Bedrock, because this game rule only exists in Bedrock Edition and not in Java Edition. And this is the game rule, Command Blocks Enabled. So it's normally set to true, so you can use command blocks, and you can get them of course by just typing in slash give command block. So there we go, we got command blocks, and we can place them down and use them to say whatever we want. For example, say hi, and there we go, it said hi. But now if we set this game rule to false, like this, we can still place it down, but now we can't activate this command block anymore, so let's try that. We go lever on the command block and it doesn't do anything, even if it says say hi and it needs redstone. The command blocks won't work anymore. Okay, back to Java again. This is the game rule command block output. So command block output is normally set to true, like this. And if we now place down a command block and put in a command like this and set it to repeat and always active, then as you can see, it will pray out all of these commands here and it's still going as you can see. And this game rule is also, well, available for both Java and Bedrock. And if we now set it to false, then the command output will stop showing up. And as you can see, if I just type in hi, there is no more command block output, which is very helpful for map makers because they don't want all of this text showing up on your screen every single tick of the game. Then moving on to something I can't really show to you, this is the game rule disable elytra movement check and it's mostly used for multiplayer so it is normally set to false as you can see and this means that it will do the elytra movement check when you start up your world so what it does is it will check the player speed when they're using an elytra and when it's disabled so set to true then it won't check the player speed again when they're wearing an elytra so this could help reduce some lag when on multiplayer but it could also be used to travel, well, very long distances with unfair methods, so with hacks. And so that's if we set it to true, then lag will be reduced and cheats could be more easily done. And this is only available for Java edition, not better edition. Going on to the game rule disable rates. So you might expect what it's going to be. So it's normally set to false, so rates are enabled normally. And this is also only available for Java edition. So normally if you have bad omen and you go to a village, so let's go to the nearby village, let's teleport over there. As you can see, a raid will start happening. On the top of the screen there's a raid bar, and so this is when this is set to false. So when we set it to true while the raid is going on, so let's see, let's see the first mob spawning. Here we go, here are the first mobs, and now if we set it to true, like this, you can see the raid will immediately stop. But the mobs will not despawn that were already there. And if we now once again get the bad omen effect like this, the no new raid will spawn. So as you can see we still have bad omen, but if we now go into the village, no new raid will spawn. We will also not lose the bad omen effect. Next we have the game rule do daylight cycle. This is one I use all of the time. As you can see it's getting to night time like right now and it's very frustrating when you're recording videos so you don't want to have to set the time to 5000 all the time to have the sun up there in the sky if you use the game rule do daylight cycle like this which is available in java and bedrock normally set to true and set it to false then the sun will stop moving as you can see you can still change the time of day though with this command but just know that the sun will not be moving on its own next up is the game rule do entity drops so this is normally set to true and available in both java and bedrock and this means that 
entities will drop items. So this is not for mobs, so this is for non-mob entities. And the main thing it does is if you have item frames somewhere and you have items in them, then normally you can just remove them like this. And if it's set to false, you can no longer remove the item. You can still turn it around, but you can no longer remove it. If you break the block over here, it will still break though. As you can see, but the items will not drop. Then moving on to do fire tick, probably one of the most used game rules. It's available for both Java and Bedrock and it's normally set to true. But a lot of people want it set to false because if you have do fire tick set to false, then fire will no longer spread. So if you grab some flint and steel and set this tree on fire over here, then as you can see, the fire will not spread when do fire tick is set to false. So normally it's set to true, so I will set that now. And then you'll see that the fire instantly starts spreading all over this tree, which is very sad. So there we go, it starts spreading and it will burn up this entire tree. Then we have the game roll Do Insomnia. So this will determine whether phantoms can spawn in nighttime, normally set to true. So Do Insomnia is normally set to true, as you can see. And you can also set it to false to stop phantoms from spawning, both available in Java and Bedrock Edition. Then we go to the immediate respawn game rule. So in Java Edition it's called do immediate respawn and in Bedrock Edition it's just called immediate respawn. And it actually tells you what it will do. So it will respawn the player immediately without showing the death screen. So it's normally set to false. And so if we die, as you can see, we'll see our death screen and then we can click respawn. But if we set it to true and then kill ourselves like this we will immediately respawn as soon as we die with a little bit of lag in between then we go on to a java only one which is do limited crafting this is normally set to false and if you set it to true then you have to have gotten the recipe before you can even craft it so for example if i get a redstone torch as you can see i will gain new recipes i need to have them before i can actually craft the items so they should be in this recipe book first before you can craft the items good example of this is a boat because you can only get a recipe by touching water so if i try to create a boat i can't do it right now so as you can see i can't craft a boat when i haven't touched the water yet and then we go to do mob loot so this is for both editions and it's set to true normally so if i kill a pig over here as you can see it will drop its items but if this game rule is set to false so mob loot false and then i try to kill a pig it will not drop anything also no experience no, no. then another one that has to do with mobs this is do mob spawning so this is normally of course set to true and is for both editions of minecraft and when this is set to true mobs will naturally spawn but this does not affect spawners and other events like raids so if we set this game rule to false then no new mobs will spawn except for in spawners or raids or other events and we can see this happening, of course, if we set the time to night. There we go. And now, as you can see, not a single hostile mob is spawning. Also, passive mobs will also no longer spawn if this game rule is active. So let's set it back to true. And you'll see immediately that some hostile mobs will start spawning. So here we go. Set it to true. And there we go. There's a spider, some skeletons, and even more mobs. Next, we have a Java only one which is do patrol spawning normally set to true and these patrols are just some illagers that spawn randomly in your world and which can give you the bad omen effect of course so if you set this to false then they will no longer spawn but if we go to a pillager outpost and over there we will see that the pillagers will still spawn here as you can see they are spawning right now but they just won't spawn in the wild when you're just wandering around Next we have the game rule do tile drops for both editions of Minecraft and it's set to true normally so this determines if blocks will drop their items normally set to true and if we just go into survival you will see that we will get some dirt from this grass but if we set this to false and then break another piece of grass then you will see that it will not drop anything also these will not drop anything you won't get anything from breaking blocks. So when this game rule is set to false and you have a chest with some items in there and then break the chest, you will still get the items inside but not the chest. With a shulker box it's a bit different because if you put items in there and then break the shulker box, then actually both disappear. An armor stand with armor on it, like this. Both the armor stand and the armor will disappear. 
and an item frame with items in it will both drop. So as you can see, other blocks will not drop, but item frames will still drop. Next is, once again, one for only Java edition. It is do trader spawning. So you probably can imagine what this is. If do trader spawning is set to true, which it normally is, wandering traders will spawn. And if it's set to false, then wandering traders will not spawn. So I can't really show this off, but as you can see, it's normally set to true. And if you set it to false, then no wandering traders will spawn around me again. Next is another very useful one, it's do weather cycle for both Bedrock and Java edition. Normally it's set to true, so it could start raining now any moment. But if we set this game rule to false, it will no longer start raining, thundering or anything like that. No snow. So it's very useful for recording videos because you won't get the annoying rain all the time. And you won't have to do slash weather clear every single time it starts raining. You can still change the weather to rain for example and then it will forever be raining the weather won't become clear again and it will keep raining forever the next game rule is the game rule drowning damage so it's available for both java and bedrock and it's normally set to true so you can drown normally but if we set this to false and try to drown ourselves so that's going to survival as you can see we still have bubbles that deplete but now when we lose all the bubbles there we go we won't take any damage so i'm in survival and i'm under the water but i'm not taking any damage i don't have any effects or anything so drowning damage will stop doing drowning damage when it's set to false. The next game rule is actually already pretty obvious but I'll still explain it. So this is the game rule. Fall damage and normally it's set to true for both Bedrock and Java and of course this means if the player will take fall damage or not so it's set to false and I go into survival and jump off this cliff. As you can see I will not take any damage. Then we have another damage game rule which is do fire damage. So it's normally set to true, so it will take damage from fire, but if it's set to false, then you will no longer take damage from a fire like this, also not from a magma cube, and you can then just swim in lava and you will not take any damage at all. Now we have one only for Java, and this is one that has been added in 1.16. This is the game rule for give dead players, normally set to true. Which means that if you die when a neutral mob is aggressive at you, so if you then die by any way, way means possible and respawn, the neutral mob will stop being angry at you. So this is normally when it's set to true, when you set it to false, and then die when a neutral mob is angry, you will see that the mob will still be angry at you, so he will still come after me, there we go, and he will still try to kill me. Then moving on to, again, one of the most used game rules, this is keep inventory for both Java and Bedrock, normally set to false. So when this game rule is set to true and you die, you will keep your inventory. You will also keep your experience if you die with keep inventory on, and your health and hunger are just reset like normal. Next we have another multiplayer game rule that's only available for Java Edition. This is the game rule log admin commands. It is normally set to true and if you set it to false it means that if an admin uses commands it will not be logged in the server log. Okay so now we have the first game rule that doesn't have true or false. This has an integer actually and this is the game rule max command chain length so it's normally set to 65,536 and it's the amount of chain command blocks that can be activated after each other so here we have eight chain command blocks and if we just activate the first impulse one you will see that it will say start one two three four five six seven eight so these just have one through eight but if we set this game rule to for example four like this and then activate this again you will see that only the first four chain command blocks will activate so that's what you can change with this game rule it's for both java and bedrock and after the first game rule has an integer we immediately move on to the second one that also has an integer available for just java edition this is the max entity cramming command game rule it's normally set to 24 and this is the amount of entities that can be in the same block without taking suffocation damage so if you set this game rule to zero or lower mobs will no longer suffocate and this damage affects survival mode or adventure mode players and all mobs except for bats 
It also includes minecarts and boats, and we see it happening right here. So if we spawn in a husk, nothing happens. If we spawn in two, as you can see, they will start taking suffocation damage until one of them dies. So let's set this game rule to zero, and now you will see it. If I spawn more husks in there, nothing will happen. They will never suffocate. They will just make a load of noise, or they jump out. Then we have the game rule mob griefing for both Java and Bedrock, normally set to true, and this determines whether creepers, zombies, endermen, ghosts, withers, ender dragons, rabbits, sheep, villagers, silverfish, and snow golems should be able to change blocks and whether they can pick them up. So this could also affect the capability of zombie-like creatures like zombie pigmen and drowned to pathfind to turtle eggs, and it prevents villagers from breeding. So let's just show this off for a creeper. Let's set this game rule to false. And let's light this creeper. Here we go. It will explode, but not do any damage to the terrain. So this will also keep mobs from trampling any crops. Or also they can't pick up items anymore. So there we go. Blazers can no longer create fire when it's set to false. Or light campfires. Creepers can still damage entities when they explode. The ender dragon will no longer destroy blocks. And just fly through them. Endermen can't pick up or place blocks anymore. And foxes will also no longer pick up sweet berries from berry bushes. Same as with the creepers. The ghosts will also not damage the blocks. But do damage the entities. Rabbits will no longer eat carrots. Ravagers will not destroy crops and leaves. And sheep will no longer eat grass, but they will still regrow their wool. Snow golems will also not create a snow trail, as you can see. And villagers will no longer farm and pick up items, but they will still open doors and throw items. The wither can't do any damage to blocks, but entities are still damaged. And zombies can no longer break doors. Then moving on to the game rule Natural Regeneration, available for both Java and Bedrock and normally set to true. And this means that you will just regenerate your health when your hunger is full, if it's set to false. So if you take any damage like this, you won't regenerate any of your health. So even if you totally refill your hunger, you will still not regenerate any health. You can still regenerate health with golden apples and regeneration and healing potions, but not by just gaining all of your hunger back. Then we are going back to Bedrock Edition for the game rule PvP. So only available for Bedrock and is normally set to true. And if you set it to false, you just can't use PvP. And so this is only for multiplayer. For this game rule, I've had to go into a super flat world with just a lot of dirt. So this is the game rule Random Tick Speed. And it's available for both Java and Bedrock. And in Java it's normally set to true. 3 and in bedrock it's normally set to 1. So this determines how fast everything spreads and grows and decays. So a higher random tick speed means it grows and decays faster, lower means it decays and grows slower. So this we can see immediately if we set it very high, so for example to 1000, you will see that this grass and mycelium will start spreading immediately because the random tick speed is set very high. So this normally happens much, much slower. And if this game rule is set to 0, it will stop spreading immediately. So let's try that. Here we go, set it to zero, and as you can see it will stop spreading immediately. Then we move on to the game rule reduced debug info. So this is available for just Java edition and normally set to false. And this has to do with this screen over here, the F3 screen or debug screen. And also if you hold F3 and press B like this, you will see the entity hitboxes. If you hold F3 and press G, you will see the chunk borders. So if this game rule is set to true like this, then both the chunk borders and hitboxes disappear and as you can see the debug screen will be reduced very much. You won't see your coordinates anymore, just your coordinates relative to the chunk you're in. And so you can see the difference here. So this is with it set to true and this is with it set to false as it is normally. Next we have the game rule send command feedback, available for both Java and Bedrock, normally set to true. And so if for example I give myself an effect, so for example night vision, you will see it says applied night vision to Maximiliano Vijfde. But if this game rule is set to false like this and we try it again, then you won't see it happening again, even if I do get the effect again. So there's also effects command blocks. So you see this over here, the previous output. So if the game rule is set to false, there won't be an output here. As you can see, nothing happened, but I still got the fire resistance effect. But if it's set to true like this and I activate this again, you will see it says applied fire resistance to me. I'm back in Bedrock for the game rule show coordinates. This is only for Bedrock and normally set to true. You will see the coordinates on the top left hand side of my screen. And if I set this game rule to false like this, then the coordinates disappear. So they don't show up when it's set to false and they do show up when it's set to true. 
Then we have the game rule show death messages. So this game rule will determine whether a death message is shown after you die. So if I die like this, you will see that there will be a death message over here, maximum amount of fire that fell out of the world. But if this game rule is set to false, like this, and then I die again, then as you can see, there is no new death message. So this also applies to your pets. If this game rule is set to true, like it is normally, this game rule is available for both Java and Bedrock, and then one of your pets sadly dies, you will see that there will be a death message in the chat. But if the game rule is set to false and the pet dies, then there sadly will also not be a death message. Next we have the game rule spawn radius, so this is available for both Java and Bedrock, and this determines the amount of blocks you spawn away from your spawn point. So this is only your original world spawn point, and not a spawn point you set with your bed or with slash spawn point. And it's normally set to 10 for Java and to 5 for Bedrock Edition. If you die, you will see that you will not spawn in the exact same place every single time, but within a radius with 10 blocks around the spawn point. You can set it to spawn you in a single place if you set this game rule to 0, like this, set it to 0. And now you will see that if I kill myself, then I will spawn in the exact same place every single time. And if this value is set to, for example, 1000, and then you die, you will see that you will spawn in a random place every single time. So now I'm here, and if I die again, I'm somewhere completely different. Now I'm over here. After that, we have a Java exclusive game rule, which is the spectators generate chunks game rule, normally set to true. And so this means that if you're in spectator mode, like this, and you fly out, you will see that chunks will be generated. So these are just new chunks that are generated while I'm in spectator mode. But if this game rule is set to false, there we go, set to false. And now we fly out a little bit more, you will see that we won't generate any new chunks over here. And so if we set this game rule to true right now again, then you will see that the chunks will start generating immediately. So there we go, there they all generate. Then we're back for a Bedrock exclusive. This is TNT Explodes. Normally set to true, and you can probably already guess what this does. If we have TNT and explode it, when it's set to true, like normal, it will explode the terrain, but if we set it to false, then we will see that if we place down TNT and explode it, like this, it will actually just disappear. So it will burn up, it will not try to explode, and it will also not explode at all. Then we have another game rule that has been added in 1.16. It's Universal Anger, only for Java, and normally set to false. So when it's set to false, the neutral mobs that are aggressive will not anger any other players than the player that made them angry. But if it's set to true, then neutral mobs that have become aggressive will become aggressive towards any player on the server. So this is for multiplayer. And finally, we go on to the very last game rule, only available for Bedrock, which is show tags, which is normally set to true. And this means that you can see tags like here can be placed on stone, can break stone block of gold, and can be placed on stone and honeycomb block. So when this game rule is set to false, and then we go back into our inventory, you will see that we can't see the tags, and we can also not see if the item has any tags, but the tags will still work. So let's try that out. Go into adventure, and let's try to break this. And as you can see, I can still break the stone with this pickaxe that can break stone, even though the tag has gone. And I can still place this diamond block on the honeycomb, but not on any other block on the ground. And so there we go, those were all the game rules in Minecraft, Java and Bedrock Edition. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions about the game rules, then please leave them in the comments below. And otherwise, please like the video if you enjoyed this video, because I've put a lot of work into it. And also consider subscribing. So I want to see you in my next videos. Until then, bye bye! Oh, 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 oh.